Now, with great honor, we invite you to experience the magic of the real love through our series of programs. Let's continue with part three. Mustafa, how's your leg? Oh, thanks to you, so much better. Would you like to dance? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh. Oh. Careful. Oh, yes. You okay? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Tom, Tom, this is the little girl. Hey, sweetheart. Why are you trembling, dear? I have dreams. Bad ones. Nightmares. Oh, you save your sweetheart. Ton, what did we do so wrong to deserve this? Is it karma? Sometimes we cannot find the reason for everything that happens. Yeah, what will happen next? I don't know. But we are going to enroll you all in school and you can be anything you want to be. I want to be a teacher. You'll be a wonderful teacher. <coughs> but for now you need to rest. Just rest. She was a sole survivor of her boat. Father, mother, older brother, all killed before her eyes. Pirates, barbarians, club and knife the men, <coughs> rape the women, throw the babies overboard. Giant waves crashing down. 140 people hurled into the sea. I hung to a splinter of wood. God knows what happened to the others. But you were lucky. Because when my cousin came out of the water, his legs were eaten off by sharks. Oh, dear God, what can I do? If there is anything I can do to help them relieve of their suffering, I vow to help. My dear friends, in this new place you will find stability to reinvent your lives. And always remember that we will have the memory of our beautiful homeland to revisit in our hearts. My sweet sister, do you ever dream about yellow apricot blossoms by the terrace in past springs? I now win the west, so far away, missing all very much in my heart. Tom, let's get some coconuts after school. Yes, my mom gave me money. My treat. <laughs> We're so happy. Beside a bowl of spinach soup and lullabies, melody us as the rhythm of the swinging hammer. Oh, how I miss the thatched house of old. Mother hair graying, gentle as the cool shade of coconut grove. Your essay, Tan, is excellent. Very perceptive. Thank you, Teacher Bin. If it is good, it is entirely thanks to your excellent instruction. And sisters and brothers in the fragrant rice field and past adolescent love like a sad refrain. All swept away by the bloody river of war, dissolved in that evening of chaos.
My teacher, sweet and gentle, as the old plum tree in the village, a bullet had punctured his heart. Bright blood flowed, heedlessly soaking the grass. Soft green blades turned to red mass. She was barely 18 in years. To the newlyweds, neighbors had just sent cheers. Soon, a promise of a new life to cherish. Mother and child both now perished. Two innocent souls. One straying bullet. On the riverbank, bodies decompose. Where will their drifting souls go? All swept away by the bloody river of war, dissolved in that evening of chaos. Long ago. Ton, come quickly. Sweetheart. She's limp as a rag, and she has a terrible fever. I'm taking her to the hospital. Come with me. Dr. Forrest, dial 118, please. Dr. Forrest, please dial 118. Nurse. I'm experiencing major resistance from patient Steinmetz on the ninth floor vis-a-vis -vis his post-op dietary needs. Steinmetz? Ninth floor? Affirmative. Now, I've ordered high fiber, high protein, maximum roughage. This man needs to regain his strength. Oh, let me look. But Dr. Burkhoff, Dr. Reinhardt specifically ordered sorbet and water for Steinmetz because of his gallstone procedure. It makes sense since ninth floor is pre-op. It's Steinberg on the 11th floor. That's post-op that needs high cal roughage. Let me see that. Okay. Well then, mistakes can happen, granted. However, I must say that sorbet and water is not sufficient nutrition Excuse for any me, person regard- Excuse me, if I may interject. Mr. Steinmetz, Dr. Berghoff, is in fact my patient, which means I am responsible for him, including his diet before a serious procedure. Yes, but as the dietitian for- Sorry to interrupt you again, but Mr. Steinberg, on the 11th floor, he's also my patient. And I'm getting concerned about his nutritional status by now. Oh, that's my job. Thank you, got it, okay. Help, please. I need to see a doctor right away. Yes, what is it? She's burning with fever. You know, she may be suffering from calcium magnesium depletion. Is she consuming sufficient quantities of dolomite? Would you please resume your duties, Dr. Berghoff? Thank you anyway, Klaus. Take a deep breath. Okay. Nurse, admit this child. Children's care intensive. I want a full workup and let me know the vitals. Yes, doctor. She'll be fine. I promise. Ton, I have a ringing toothache. Oh, yes, you poor man. Doctor, can the hospital refer us to a good dentist? Yes, I'll take care of that. Really? Well, you did ask for a good dentist, didn't you? That'd be me. Uh, you're not a... An MD? Of course I am, but I'm... Oh, but I'm also a dentist. And in my vast spare time after that, I'm chief of epidemiology. Nurse, I'll see this man momentarily in room four, please. You're Dr. Reinhardt. Guilty as charged, Ralph Reinhardt. Have we met? No, but Elsa Mannheim is my very best friend in Germany. Ah, uh, yes. Elsa and I had dinner recently. I still don't know your name. My name is Tan. Tan, it's a pleasure to meet you. If I remember correctly, Elsa had a poem that was written by her best friend. That would be you? I'm afraid so. So, Elsa has wonderful things to say about your work methods, and I would very much like to discuss with you the refugee problem here in Germany. I would welcome the chance to speak with you, Doctor. Excellent. Have dinner with me tonight. Tonight? Forgive me. It would be an honor if you'd be available for dinner tonight. Might you be available? I think I would. I should tell you, it's my birthday. Mine too. Really? Yeah. Well, then we have to go someplace special. I should tell you I'm vegetarian. But fear not, I know where to get the best baba ganoush in all of Europe. Excellent. I'll pick you up at 7.30 at the Red Cross. All right then, doctor. I am very heartened to know that you're as concerned as I am about the refugee situation. Carla! Yes, doctor? What time is my last appointment? Seven o'clock. Cancel it. Cancel it? My world has just been turned upside down. It is 
in the lovely kingdom. It is someone here I could love. My heart wouldn't be here if she were not. Maybe it's the way that she smiles. Maybe it's the gentle tone from She know I am here so near It is in the lovely kingdom It is someone here Someone to love <laughs> going to be late. Dessert. No, thank you. I couldn't. Thank you, Ferdinand. Oh, and Ferdinand, everything was delicious. Ah. <laughs> so, did you like your food? Isn't it interesting? Well, I have to admit, to be honest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why so reluctant to say so? Is it only because it's new, different, not what you're used to? Good point. I mean, I find you new. And different. And quite frankly, very interesting. Dr. Reinhardt. Please call me Ralph. I hear Dr. Reinhardt in the hospital 18 hours a day. All right. Rolf. One last thing about the refugees. Imagine if you can being suddenly without your culture, your village. Or when entire... do I get to hear more about you? We must remember that if we are to help. Tom, properly... forgive me, but I fear that you've taken on too much. My heart breaks for what has happened to your people, but you, no one person can save them all. It's impossible. But I must try. Of course you must try. But your methodology is doomed to fail. There just, there aren't enough hours in the day. I fear that you will become a burned out woman in six months. You have to learn to simply let go. But the love I feel for them cannot possibly burn out. I know I cannot restore everything that is lost, but their souls survive. You're a doctor. You, you must know what I'm talking about. I'm in the business of healing bodies, Tom. I can't even begin to wonder what happens to their souls. Forgive me, but that sounds a little heartless. And I do not believe in any way that you're a completely heartless man. I saw it today with little Lynn. I'm a scientist, a realist. And you're a woman of what? Faith? Yes, of faith, the heart, scientists. Why can't you just let the head and the heart combine into one? Because, Tan, don't you see? Science is heartless. The facts are what they are. I exchanged the church for medicine because faith alone never cured a kidney disease or even fixed a tooth. That little child that you brought in today. Lynn. Lynn. Supposing Lynn were very ill and there was just nothing we could do to save her. Well, sometimes sick and weak people die. You just simply have to come to accept it. No, I do not have to accept it. Thank you very much for dinner and a very stimulating conversation. Will you excuse me, please? It's time for me to go. What so suddenly? I'm going back to the hospital. At this hour? The hour doesn't matter. I'm going to sit with Lynn. Uh, but she'll be asleep. All the more reason for me to be there. What if she wakes up and has no idea where she is? Uh, let me at least call you a taxi. No, thank you. I look forward to the walk. But it's freezing out, and look how dark it is. On the contrary, there's a full moon. You must not have noticed. I think I was really impressed with the part um, when Tom, when she worked at the hospital in Germany and at the Red Cross. I was impressed by, you know, her spirit, her kindness. To do such an incredible musical, and it was a short time. I mean, usually it's a lot longer. You know, Broadway is months and months. 
But I have to tell you that the people that were involved, all of these incredible writers and, and, and lyricists and musicians, and they're all top notch. We had the best possible people. The music was so beautifully put in with the, with the poetry, you know, and it was lovely and I was thrilled. And of course, we had incredible singers, let's face it. I mean, these, the leads were extraordinary. And the magnificent orchestra and the magnificent conductor. It was just gorgeous. I was overwhelmed by it. Such a Rent fan to see Adam Pascal live, and I was in the second row. It was just a dream come true. Shirley Jones, Betty Buckley, I, I mean, these are just Broadway legends. I mean, Shirley Jones, Carousel, Oklahoma. The last two had just brought chills down my spine. It's just so powerful and with great lyrics and uh, great composition. It's uh, very beautiful. Through all of the hatred that we have in this world and all of the wars and the suffering and the fact that she can still find a path of happiness, enlightenment, is just so inspiring, especially as an artist. It's something that I'll certainly keep with me for quite some time. Joyful viewers, we appreciate your company today for The Real Love, a musical that unites hearts part three of a multi-part series. Please join us again on Saturday, June 5th for part four.